Here is the Golf. This is the uh, the Mark VI, and I will be hardwiring a front-facing dash cam in this video. Now I've done a few dash cam videos recently, including a full front and rear setup with uh, parking mode in my Ford. So you might be interested in those other videos. And uh, this camera and its wiring is actually my old Viofo A119 system that I am uh, sort of hand me downing to the Volkswagen now. Uh, and I did a comprehensive video previously talking about this particular arrangement uh, when I first put it in the Ford. So I'm not actually going to repeat all the details of the camera and the wiring and power supply uh, because it would just be redundant. So if you want to know about that, then I suggest you switch over to that video instead. I'll link it below. However, I uh, thought it worthwhile making a video since I was doing this anyway, uh, as there are obviously things specific to the Golf that people will hopefully find useful, uh, particularly getting from the cabin fuse box up to the courtesy light panel and uh, to the upper center of the windscreen where the camera wants to go, uh, with all the wiring properly run and hidden for a professional installation. So you see some people doing slightly dodgy installs where uh, they just sort of mash the cable up against the headliner adjacent the windscreen glass and call it a day. Uh, but that always makes me sad. So to do it properly, I'd want access to the spaces behind uh, so as to route the cables through interior space and uh, keep them actually safely out of the way. Starting at the top, uh, I wanted to get behind the courtesy light space and on the Golf, it's a tiny bit more complicated than on other cars. Uh, first, this uh, plastic fascia at the back uh, is actually a cover for some screws. And it has little plastic clips all around its edges, which can be popped out carefully by uh, using a blade like this. Uh, the whole thing is quite flimsy, so I did have to be careful. Uh, and once it is at a certain point, I could use my fingers to pull it down and out. Uh, and then it turns out to be sort of hinged at the front, as you can see. It can probably re be removed completely, but uh, there's no need, uh, because all I wanted was to undo these screws, uh, which are Torx T20 heads. Um, so with the right driver bit, they come, uh, they undo easily enough. Uh, they're a sort of self-tapping style, which just go into plastic, and they don't actually need to be undone completely. Uh, once they let go of the paneling behind, then it's sufficient to just leave them and the whole courtesy light assembly will uh, basically fall out of its bracket. Now I could have unplugged that, of course, but I didn't see much need. Uh, it was perfectly happy just hanging there from its wiring loom. And uh, then the next thing to get behind was the A-pillar trim. And the first step in getting that off is this airbag label at the top. Uh, which is actually a cover sort of insert which hides a screw behind it. Now, I found getting this off actually a little bit tricky. The clip is a slightly strange design, but uh, with enough levering in different places, it did come away. Uh, then the screw is another Torx, this time a T25, uh, which again I found could be undone, but uh, just left in place once it released from the bracket behind. Right, then before the pillar trim will come away, uh, next to the fuse box is a further piece of trim that has to go first. Uh, I just pulled that out directly by hand, no tools required. And then the pillar trim will be free. Uh, it's sort of held in place by the weatherproofing rubber, so I focused on that area first. It flexes enough to be pulled away from under it. And then it obviously wanted to come up at the uh, dashboard end so the top needs to be flexed inward enough to clear the headliner. And in the process, there are a few uh, plug-style clips which will pop out. Uh, you'll see them in a second. Uh, but once they're clear, then it can be pulled out of the base at the dash, and it just comes free. So the trick with this stuff is to go easy and just find the path of least resistance. Uh, none of it needs much force, and if you just go pulling on things like a chimp, then you will break something because the trim itself is obviously a bit delicate. Now this is the uh, inside of that trim, just so you can see it. Uh, you can see the plastic plug clips and up on the metal A-frame itself, you can see the brackets that they go into. Now, at this point, I was happy with access to everything and uh, it was time to start wiring things up. So this hardwire setup I'm using involves a fuse tap or a piggy tap, uh, piggyback arrangement, 
uh, as you'll see. And to do that, I needed to find a suitable fuse socket which would supply ignition switched power. And uh, also take a note of uh, which side uh, of the fuse socket is hot. So you need a, a multimeter for that. And you see here the very first empty socket I'm trying at the top here is providing 12 volts from its top side. And then to uh, check its ignition switched, I'm turning off the ignition and uh, seeing what happens to the power. So this dies, which is perfect. And uh, since it's an empty socket, it doesn't even require removing any extant fuse. Turn the ignition on again, and there's the power for the camera. So, as I outlined earlier, this setup is very simple for the A119. It's just a driving camera. It does not have a proper parking mode, so there's no need to find a uh, separate permanent power. Um, I just want it to come on and off with the ignition. Very simple. Here's the fuse tap, along with a 5 amp fuse installed in the uh, added circuit slot. And the ring terminal there is the ground wire. Now because I'm using an empty socket on the fuse panel, there's no need to add the original fuse, uh, so the inside slot, uh, slot will stay empty. And the only thing to make sure is correct is the direction of the, fu of the, uh, the tap wire. Uh, they're designed in such a way that the new circuit wire will run away from the hot side of the fuse. Uh, so that's to say downward here because it's the top side that was hot. Uh, and I believe it was the top side of all the sockets um, that I tested on this panel, uh, but you should always check. Next I needed a ground, and the most convenient one available was just the screw that holds the plastic of the fuse panel itself to the dash frame. And that's another Torx, and with it out, I just wanted to put the ring of the terminal under it and do it straight back up. So that's simple enough. And the only thing to really think about here is having the wire running in a uh, sensible direction off the screw that's not going to get in the way. With that plugged in, I had power, and then it was just a case of running the cabling. Uh, first, at the bottom, the wiring wants to lead out of the fuse box to the front, where it will go behind that lower black trim, and then up into the A-pillar space. So here you see my SAE plug that I'm using, Obviously this isn't important, but I, I was using this arrangement previously just because it segmented the cabling in a convenient way that would allow disconnection of uh, one part or another in the future without requiring complete removal of everything. And what plugs into that was this uh, dual USB power adapter into which you can see this uh, short USB cable that actually goes to the camera. Um, again, none of this is necessarily the same as what you might want to do, uh, but it worked well for me. And the uh, the other advantage of this little thing is it gives me a, a second USB 5 volt socket uh, now, uh, you know, in the headliner if I ever want to run anything else off that. So this is going to find a new home above the courtesy lights. And it turns out there's a bit of space up there, so that wasn't a problem. But I did need to pay attention to the light assembly itself uh, when it goes back up. Obviously you can't have anything interfering with it. So there's this rather convenient black plastic piece of uh, frame which goes across above which I figured I'd mount the USB adapter. And then the USB cable itself needs to be fed through to the front and uh, out the headliner where to, you know, to where the camera will go. Now I had a bit of trouble trying to do this from the back. It's a bit tricky to get it in the right place. Uh, but I had better luck from the front where I could pull the headliner down with my fingers uh, to make enough space and uh, get the plug through the gap and then grab it from the back and pull it through. Next, I needed to get the cable from the light area across the headliner to the top of the A-pillar. So you subscribers might recognize this uh, trusty piece of aluminium wire which I used a while ago on my Ford to install my um, front and rear setup on that. There's no way I'd ever have fed the cable across on its own. So what I did was poke the wire across until I got it to come out the other side and then tie it around the cable uh, so it could be pulled through. I should say that I had already filed the cut ends of this wire into a round so they uh, wouldn't scratch or tear anything up too badly. Uh, you wouldn't want to be trying to push anything sharp through here. And also be aware that uh, on the other side of the car is the, um, the side curtain airbag. Uh, also, this is um, aluminium, not steel, so while it's stiff, it's not that strong and it can easily be flexed, which is nice. Anyway, 
Once through, I just uh, positioned it roughly right. And then the uh, USB plug could go back together and the adapter could be installed above that frame, like I said. Now I've just cable tied it here so it uh, won't go anywhere or make any noise, um, but obviously it's easily um, removed in the future. Back at the A pillar end, the tail of that cable is just going to run down the pillar and the SAE plug will go together. After which the camera should have power available to it at this point, so I'd stop here and uh, connect the camera up and just test that. Uh, make sure that it has power and that it, um, that it will turn on uh, before starting to put everything back permanently. So yeah, ignition on and check the camera works. Right, the cable at the A pillar should be fixed neatly out of the way. And what I should mention is to make sure it doesn't interfere with the side curtain airbag. Uh, the cable must be above or behind that. Uh, imagine the airbag deploying and uh, just ensure that there's nothing in its way. And then I've mounted it to the inside of the pillar frame using these little black plastic wire clips that have uh, self-adhesive pads on them. Uh, they came with the camera from Viofo. And uh, then down at the base, it just goes straight down toward the, fuse, toward the fuse box. Everything neat and tidy, if I do say so myself. So once I was happy with the cabling, it was just time for the trim to go back in. Uh, the A-pillar is the most awkward, uh, but just like removal, it's just a case of being patient and finding the particular tricky little way it wants to be moved into place. It needs to be inserted into the dash at the base first, uh, then each plug clip into those uh, steel brackets one at a time starting from the bottom until it's basically home. The rubber weatherproofing again helps to hold the outside, although in my case it seemed to sort itself out really. I gave each plug a squeeze to uh, check that they were home properly, then it was time for the screw and with that done up tight the cover with the, uh, the airbag label just pushes back by hand. After that I put back in the black trim in front of the fuse box. It just slides downward at the bottom and then pushes forward. It's a bit flimsy really, but it uh, gets held in place by the fuse box cover once that goes back in. You'll just want to check the wiring as you do it to uh, make sure that it's neatly arranged. And then yeah, the, uh, the fuse box cover, assuming the fuse tap and the ground wire has all been done properly, then it will just go back on like normal. Right, now the camera actually had to be mounted. As you can see in this car, I'm installing it on the uh, the passenger uh, side of the mirror. That's the left side in this right-hand drive car. Uh, this is where there is space made by the angle of the rear vision mirror. Uh, there really is not sufficient room on the driver's side. Um, I'm also uh, putting it up as high as possible, where it's hidden largely by the, uh, the black dots sun tint on the glass. Uh, but I've also checked that the view the lens has is through the wiped area of the screen, which is kept clear and clean by the wipers. And the other consideration here is the light sensor of the auto dimming mirror. Uh, you can see the sensor there to the far side. And by keeping the camera as far inside as possible, I'm avoiding blocking light to that to the extent possible. Uh, because uh, if I did block it, then it would mess up the self dimming possibly. So with the camera installed and the USB cable tucked away and the uh, USB adapter securely tied in place, it was time to put the last piece of the puzzle back in, that's to say the courtesy light assembly. It just goes back up the same way it came out, although I did take care to check that nothing I'd added was going to get in the way. And by the way, you can see the lights are on. I never unplugged them or uh, disconnected the battery. Um, maybe it would be best to do so, but I wasn't interfering with any of the electrics here, and nor was there any risk of short-circuiting anything uh, with the way that I was doing my pre-prepared cabling. You know, there were no um, positive electrics exposed at any point. Once it's back in place, uh, those two screws need to be done up. Again, they're just a self-tapping type, uh, which are going into plastic, so I suggest being careful not to over-tighten them. Once they're snug and the assembly is all home where it should be, then that's enough. And that uh, flimsy plastic panel rotates back up and uh, snaps back into place. If you press on all the same sections that required unclipping, then uh, all the clips should re-engage. And that's it. Uh, there's the camera running with the shortest length of visible cable and uh, otherwise completely hidden all around the mirror and the courtesy light 
across the headliner, down the A-pillar, and to the fuse box. And it's all set up completely automatic with the hard wiring so that it will come on and off with the ignition without the driver having to ever even think about it. And from the outside, it's a pretty subtle look. It uh, just sits neatly next to the mirror mount. It doesn't occlude that self-dimming sensor, and I think it generally looks pretty inoffensive. All right, so that's all. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.